Thank you for joining us for the Ministry of the Word at Redeemed Christian Fellowship in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope the Ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you. Hi, welcome to our Sunday afternoon RCF live stream. We want to thank you for joining us and being here with us today. Um, last week we skipped a chapter in our Women of Faith manual. So we're going to go backwards a chapter and then we'll go ahead again. <laughs> but this week we're going to talk about Abel. Did I say Abel? Abigail. Abigail. <laughs> All the names we were going over right before we started. There's a lot. <laughs> got jumbled <laughs> in my head. <laughs> All right, let's pray. And I'll pray this time because I feel like I need it. <laughs> uh, if you missed this morning's message, Pastor taught a really good message on prayer and communicating with God. So go back and listen to it. It was mm -hmm. really good. Thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that your anointing is on your word, that your anointing helps us. Yes, it enables us. It gives us the strength and the wisdom that we need, Father God, to do your word, to do your will. And we just give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we're going to, again, we're going to talk about Abigail, not Abel. Not Abel. Abigail. Because <laughs> we're talking about women, women of, of faith. Women of faith. <laughs> so... <laughs> Abigail was David's second wife, and she was a woman of faith. And so we're going to talk about the faith that she had and how it helped her um, become who God had for her. Um, we're going to start with 1 Samuel chapter 25, verses 2 and 3. What is the ESV? Samuel? English Standard Version. Okay, we're going to read out English Standard. <clears throat> there was a man in Moan whose business was in Carmel. The man was very rich. He had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. He was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. The woman was discerning and beautiful, but the man was harsh and badly behaved. He was a Calebite, King James Version, House of Caleb. Yeah, so Abigail was a woman of good understanding. She had higher insight. To put it, to put it in a way that we might understand, she understood things on a higher or spiritual level, level and she was very beautiful in her appearance as well. So she was wise. She mm -hmm. had higher understanding and she operated in that. So any believer who possesses this type of spiritual insight has what is called a heart understanding or Holy Ghost insight. Her husband Nabal was a very rich man, largely because it is said that he inherited a good portion of Caleb's estate, which is kind of interesting if you think about it. Mm -hmm. That's pretty interesting. but. Uh, he, he was, for he was of the house of Caleb. However, he was also very cruel and evil in his behavior. That's sad. Mm -hmm. Cruel man, evil man. So the word churlish, which was in the King, in James. The King James Version, we've read the English Standard Version, but, he, but in the King James it says, but the man was churlish and evil in his doing. So the word churlish means hardened heart, stiff necked and stubborn. <laughs> Just, and the word <coughs> evil means naughty, unpleasant, giving people pain and unhappiness and to cause misery, distress, and inquiry. So That's this is horrible. his character. He was churlish <laughs> and, and evil. evil, which he gave people pain and unhappiness. He caused misery, distress, injury. So that was said of him. Mm. Matthew Henry's commentary adds that Nabal lacked honesty and was oppressive. Mm. I've been around oppressive people. They're very difficult people to be around and you want to get away from them. Yes. Yes. Run. <laughs> so the question arises that if Abigail had such spiritual insight, how could she end up married to Nabal? Well, history records that it was her father who promised her hand in marriage to Nabal. Um, again, that was the Matthew Henry's commentary. Probably to make sure that she would be well taken care of and possibly for some sort of financial gain. So that, you know, that was common, a common practice. She was promised to him. She didn't really have a choice in the matter. Uh, maybe her father didn't know he was an evil man. Maybe mm -hmm. he became evil, who knows. But um, that wasn't really her choice. So we're going to um, find out what she did with that. In uh, 1 Samuel chapter 25, verses 4 through 9. Do you want me to read the King James or the ESV? Uh, English Standard Version is easy. If we need to go back, we can. Okay. David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep. So David sent ten young men, and David said to the young men, Go up to Carmel, and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus you shall greet him. Peace be to you, and peace be to your house, and peace be to all that you have. 
I hear that you have shearers. Now your shepherds have been with us, and we did them no harm, and they missed nothing all the time they were in Carmel. Ask your young men, and they will tell you. Therefore, let my young men find favor in your eyes, for we come on a feast day. Please give whatever you have at hand to your servants and to your son David. When David's young men came, they said all this to Nabal in the name of David, and then they waited. So David's men were there, and there was actually a lot of men that he had there, and they were they were kind of watching um, Nabal's men work and kind of protecting them. And so David's like, it's on a feast day. He wants to feed his men. So he's kind of like saying, hey, we did this for you. Can you feed us? You know, um, in a very polite pleasant way <laughs> if you read it again like he 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 wasn't very he was nice he didn't demand or anything mm -hmm. so David had heard that Nabal's men were shearing his sheep in the wilderness this was a time when the Philistines were raiding and robbing the threshing floors in the region where Nabal's men were um, again that came from the Matthew Henry's commentary you can also see first Samuel chapter 32 verse 1 for more reference on that however David's men stood guard over Nabal's herd and men so that no harm came to them. They protected them during this dangerous time mm -hmm. of the raidings from the Philistines. So then David sent men to Nabal to ask for help in caring for his men. From David's perspective, he wanted to show that he had not come to rob Nabal, but rather to ask for him for some help. After all, Nabal's wealth remained intact mm -hmm. because of David's assistance. Yeah. Without David's men, who knows what could have happened right. to Nabal's wealth. And so like he's like, hey, help us out here. Beat us. Yeah, not that hard. <laughs> and he was a wealthy man. We know that he was a wealthy man. He could have very easily right. been generous and kind and repaid what was done for him. Right. Uh, we're going to read uh, verses 10 through 13 now. And Nabal answered David's servants, Who is David? Who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants these days who are breaking away from their masters. Shall I take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed for my shearers and give it to men who come from I do not know where? So David's young men turned away and came back and told him all this. And David said to his men, Every man strap on his sword. And every man of them strapped on his sword. And David also strapped on his sword. And about 400 men went up after David, while 200 remained with the baggage. That's a lot of men. 600 men in total. 400 <laughs> went with him. 200 remained with the, their, their baggage. Wow. And uh, David's like, David's ready to fight. He's like, them's fighting words. Let's go. How <laughs> foolish is yeah, so Nabal's, res Nabal. yeah, Nabal's response to David's men was harsh and cruel for he would not recognize David or mm -hmm. his family. He's like, who is this man? Mm -hmm. Like, what if I have to do with you? Foolish. Very foolish. <clears throat> he accused David of abandoning and deserting King Saul in front of his men, not taking into account that David's popularity took place and grew with his men in large part because Saul was set on killing him. So he fled for his life. So like... <laughs> Not only did he, like, say, who is this? He put him down. I like how Pastor points out that he accused David of abandoning Saul. Yeah. When really, David was just defending himself by fleeing. Right. <laughs> so David's men reported back to him, and he gathered his men and set out to destroy Nabal and all that he had. This is where Abigail comes into play. And we're going to read verses 14 through 19. But one of the young men told Abigail... <clears throat> Nabal's wife. Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to greet our master, and he railed at them. Yet the men were very good to us, and we suffered no harm, and we did not miss anything when we were in the fields, as long as we went with them. They were a wall to us both by night and by day, all the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Now therefore, Know this and consider what you should do, for harm is determined against our master and against all his house, and he is such a worthless man that one cannot speak to him. Then Abigail made haste and took two hundred loaves and two skins of wine and five sheep already prepared, and five seahs. Mm -hmm. uh, a seah was about seven quarts or 7.3 liters of parched grain and a hundred clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on the donkeys and she said to her young men go on before me behold i come after you but she did not tell her husband nabal 
So in verse 14, we saw that one of the young men who had taken care of the sheep was a witness of David's men and how they conducted themselves and went to Abigail, realizing that David and his men had been done wrong. So he mm -hmm. went and reported to Abigail, hey, they protected us. We didn't miss anything because they were there. Um, he recognized the good that David's men did, and he also saw how harsh yes. Nabal's response was. I like how he calls him a foolish, what did it say, a worthless man mm -hmm. that you can't even talk to. He's like, I'm coming to you because your husband's worthless and no one can talk <laughs> to him. <laughs> Basically, he said that. Mm -hmm. So in verse 15, the young man reveals that David's men were very good to them and that no one was hurt, neither was anything missed. Uh, as long as they were there doing their work, the servant reported that they were a wall of protection for them night and day. And then he said, Now consider what you will do, for evil will come against us and our master and his household. For Nabal is such a person that man ca a man cannot speak to him or correct his behavior. Mm. So Abigail quickly gathered together provisions to give to David and his men. And she said unto her servants, Go before me and I will come after you. But she did not tell her husband. Now this is like where her spiritual insight and understanding comes into place. She knew what she needed to do. She didn't hesitate, and she got it done. Yeah. Uh, we're going to read verses 20 through 24. And as she rode on the donkey and came down under cover of the mountain, behold, David and his men came down toward her, and she met them. Now David had said, Surely in vain have I guarded all that this fellow has in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that belonged to him. And he has returned me evil for good. God do so to the enemies of David, and more also, if by morning I leave so much as one male of all who belong to him. When Abigail saw David, she hurried and got down from the donkey and fell before David on her face and bowed to the ground. She fell at his feet and said, On me alone, my lord, be the guilt. Please let your servant speak in your ears and hear the words of your servant. Interesting, she takes the blame. Yes put the blame on me. Abigail pleads her and her house's case before David. Verse 20 says that she came down the hill and David and his men were coming down against her. David begins to discuss the mistreatment of her husband against him and his men and that his heart was set on destroying everything that he owned. That if he left a male there, he wouldn't leave even a male standing. That's mm -hmm. That's intense. He was ready for a battle. Mm -hmm. So by verse 23 and 24, Abigail sees David and swiftly dismounts her mule and falls down before David on her face um, and, and falls down and bows, falls down before David on her face and bows down. And she says, upon me, my Lord, let this iniquity be. At this point, Abigail takes full responsibility for her husband's actions. Even though her husband knew nothing about what she was doing, she still chose to protect him mm -hmm. that takes faith that takes strength <laughs> uh she would have had to she would have she would have had she was she was putting herself out there sacrificing herself mm -hmm. to make yeah. to save her her household mm -hmm. um we're gonna read verses 25 through 28 now let not my lord regard this worth, worthless fellow <clears throat> nabal for as his name is so is he nabal is his name and folly is with him <laughs> But I, your servant, did not see the young men of my Lord, whom you sent. Now then, my Lord, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, because the Lord has restrained you from blood guilt and from saving with your own hand, now let, now then let your enemies and those who seek to do evil to my Lord be as Nabal. And now let this present that your servant has brought to you, my Lord, be given to the young men who follow my Lord. Please forgive the trespass of your servant, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord is fighting the battles of the Lord, and evil shall not be found in you so long as you live. So she confesses that her husband was a wicked and foolish man, and that she was not aware that his men had even come to her, house, to her husband seeking help. And then she declares that her hearing what her husband has done was the Lord intervening. Mm. So she's, she's, yeah, she's recognizing, were you going to say something? No, just the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right? Intervening the divine, yeah. She had that spiritual understanding and she, she recognized that because she was made aware of the situation, that this is the Lord giving, mm -hmm. intervening and giving them a chance to make it right mm -hmm. and not just let there be bloodshed. And she even, she even says uh, that the Lord restrained you from blood guilt. From, from from killing 
uh, men of the household of Caleb. Like, that's what David was about to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So thus, um, allowing her to get involved and to gather provisions for him and his men, making or settling or setting things right with him, thus keeping him from blood, guiltiness, and seeking revenge. And then she presented him with the gifts that would meet his need as well as his men. And by the end of verse 28, Abigail's actions and words reveal a tremendous amount of faith, wisdom, and insight that could only come from the spirit of wisdom or the Holy Ghost. Abigail speaks by faith and spiritual insight. We're going to read that in verses 29 through 31. This is the New Amplified. Should anyone rise up to pursue you and seek your life, then the life of my Lord will be bound in the precious bundle of the living with the Lord your God. But the lives of your enemies, those he will hurl out as from the center of a sling, and it will happen when the Lord does for my Lord, according to all the good that he has spoken, promised, concerning you, and appoints you ruler over Israel, that this incident will not cause grief or bring a troubled conscience to my Lord, both by having shed blood without cause, and by my Lord having avenged himself. When the Lord deals well with my Lord, then remember with favor your maidservant. <laughs> By the end of verse 28, Abigail begins to reveal her faith and insight by saying, The Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house. She is stating that she knows, take note, for this is the language of faith. She's stating what she knows, take note, this is the language of faith. So she knows who David is. She's calling him her Lord. And um, she said, uh, The Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house. The Lord, She knew what the Lord was doing for David. And she's mm-hmm. saying, Remember me, remember me, your servant. She is also declaring her loyalty to, da- to David by calling him my Lord and referred to herself as his handmaid several times in these passages of scripture. She knew that the Lord was with David and that someday he would rule God's people. So by the end of verse 31, she says, when the Lord has dealt well, brought all this to pass for you, remember this, that is, don't forget me, your handmaid or your mm-hmm. servant. In the Hebrew mind, she was saying, don't forget to call for your servant. Don't, don't leave me out. Don't forget about me. Yeah. <laughs> Abigail had accurately revealed David's future and the future of those that would come against him. It is clear that she was functioning with the Holy Ghost insight and assistance. It is also clear that actions strongly revealed her faith. It takes faith. That took strength and faith mm-hmm. to do. Uh, and we're going to read 32 through 35. David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who sent you to meet me this day. And blessed be your discretion and discernment. And blessed be you, who has kept me from bloodshed this day, and from avenging myself by my own hand. Nevertheless, as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, who has prevented me from harming you, if you had not come quickly to meet me, most certainly by the morning light there would have not been left to Nabal Nabal, so much as one male. He recognizes what he was saved from and spared Mm -hmm. from doing. (laughs) So David accepted what she had brought to him and said to her, go up to your house in peace. See, I have listened to you and have granted your request. (laughs) Then David blesses her for her advice and wisdom and grants her petition and having received her gifts, gifts, he sends her home in peace. Mm -hmm. He recognized what he was spared from. He said, you've saved me from bloodshed and guilt. Um, and so he, he, uh, he, he, he blessed her for it. That's interesting, yeah. isn't it? Did you want to it say is. something? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're going to talk about, uh, the Nabal's fate, the tragic death of Nabal. Mm-hmm. We're going to read verses 36 through 38. Then Abigail came to Nabal, and he was holding a feast in his house for the shears, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's mood was joyous because he was very drunk. So she told him nothing at all until morning light. But in the morning when Nabal was sober and his wife told him these things, his heart died within him and he became paralyzed and helpless like a stone. Mm. About ten days later, the Lord struck Nabal and he died. So Nabal was drinking when Abigail came to tell him what she had done. However, he was very drunk, so she decided to wait until morning so he could sober up. When the morning came, she told him what what she had done. Um, the King James Bible said that his heart died within him and he became as stone. The New English Translation Bible said that he had a stroke and was paralyzed. Mm-hmm. And the Amplified Bible said 
that his heart died within him and he became paralyzed, helpless as a stone. So there is no doubt that his heavy drinking and hardness of heart, because remember he was he was an evil man yeah. in his heart. He talked about that in the beginning. Um, that his hardness of heart contributed to his death along with the news of Abigail's t kindness towards David and his men. It was too much for him to bear. And about 10 days after that, the Lord smote him and he died. A lifestyle of wickedness and cruelty came to an end. This was a tragedy for it was clear that judgment came to Nabal on the day of his death. It is also clear that some treat that some treat God's anointed with no regard, so let them be aware that they may not live out their lives to their full extent. Yes. Mm. You don't come against God's anointed. Mm -hmm. Right. I am so glad Pastor put that in there. Yeah. Yeah, because, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I mean, like, his, he, he, like, pretty much died right away. Like, yeah. that's not, like, she came to tell him what she did. She wasn't going to hide it from him. So that, that also takes faith. Like, she wasn't, she wasn't right. trying to keep secrets from him and hide what she had done. And if he was cruel and, and evil, I mean, that took faith that he wouldn't, like, lash out or, mm -hmm. you know, do something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Think, so she was brave going in there and telling him. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because so. I think some people would want to hide that because they know, like they're you said, afraid. they're afraid of the retribution of what yeah. they would experience. Or the anger or the... Yeah. So... Um, now this is where David calls on Abigail. We're going to read verses 39 through 42. When David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord who has avenged the insult I received at the hand of Nabal and has kept back his servant from wrongdoing. The Lord has returned the evil of Nabal on his own head. Then David sent and spoke to Abigail to take her as his wife. When the servants of David came to Abigail at Carmel, they said to her, David has sent us to you to take you to him as his wife. And she rose and bowed with her face to the ground and said, Behold, your handmaid is a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. And Abigail hurried and rose and mounted a donkey, and her five young women attended her. She followed the messengers of David and became his wife. Aww. I love how he says, <laughs> I love how David said, um, blessed be the Lord who has avenged the insult I received at the hand of Nabal. He knew that he recognized that the Lord avenged him mm -hmm. and has kept back his servant from wrongdoing. Because Abigail intervened and she was a woman of faith, it kept David from wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. It helped preserve him and keep him right as well. Isn't that interesting? I want her as my wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so David sat and communed with Abigail. In context, the idea of the word communed here means that he discussed a marriage proposal with her, which means she must agree with the proposal of her own free will, as we clearly see in the text. We must remember that these accounts of biblical history are embedded in the culture of the day. Women in the Eastern world were not and are not viewed like the women, Western women of our day. They're still, they still aren't viewed the way that we are. So it is said of Abigail um, that she was very beautiful. However, her greater beauty lay in the attributes in her ability to be extremely loyal and submissive. Mm. I was listening to Dave talk to our daughter the other day, um, and we were commenting on how beautiful she looked because she put a lot of effort into her appearance that day, and she just looked beautiful. But I, one thing I really appreciated Dave saying was that what really makes you beautiful is the beauty within oh. and so I, uh, I Abigail clearly was beautiful inside and it said that she was beautiful on the outside as well but mm -hmm. it makes your beauty within makes you more beautiful on the outside yes so this is recognized by the way she viewed herself or saw herself she saw herself as a servant she constantly referred to herself as a handmaiden so that is in so that is important for us to understand to be able to comprehend her response to David. In verse 40, the servants of David came to Abigail relating to her what David had proposed and they were to, there to take her back to David to be married. She was obviously in agreement with his proposal for in verse 41 it says that she arose and bowed herself to the earth and said, Behold, let thine handmaiden let thy handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. You can see that she's very like willing and mm -hmm. submissive there. So then, and then she quickly arose and rode on a donkey, taking her handmaidens with her, following David's men, and became his wife. Understanding Abigail and the series of events in her life is extremely important to the faith of any woman. First and foremost, she was completely dedicated to the Lord. That's the key. Very, 
very that's the key that's very clear she was that everything she did she was very dedicated to the lord she understood that the hand of the lord was on david and that he would someday rise up and rule the people of god as a king her heart was that of a servant she must have gone through very some very difficult times while she was married to nabal however she was a woman that had developed the ability at least in some regard to know and understand with all surety what the lord was doing and saying and she was willing to 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 be used she mm -hmm. was willing to stand on her faith and be used it was faith in what God was doing at this particular time in biblical history that delivered her from such an ungodly man mm. her faith uh, delivered her and spared David and all her household that was her faith yeah. that did that so okay you said not yet now what <laughs> <laughs> now now I feel silly <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> um <laughs> Well, what really spoke to me was, um, like, thinking about how living with somebody who is, is cruel mm -hmm. and mean and just a, a horrible person really can affect your mind and put you down and can put you in a place where you, um, you struggle, mm -hmm. you can struggle with your faith, mm -hmm. and how she was able to, you know, have strong faith. Like that really spoke to me was how she was able to do what God um, put on her heart to do, to follow, to save her household mm -hmm. and David. I it just it blew me away. Like, yeah, you're saying like she could have been affected and she yeah. could have she could have just you know been fallen victim to the treatment of her husband, right? But instead, she rose up in faith. Yeah, yeah, and that not only. It, just, it it saved a ton of people that day. <laughs> yeah. like, her faith saved a ton of people. Yeah, because he said he wouldn't have left any man. Yeah. Any man. And not only that, but she went in and she took the blame and said for her and, and you know, protect, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Like, I would like to say, how many I would people do would that, be like, I don't know. <laughs> how many people would be like, <laughs> right, my knowing. My is stupid. I am so sorry. Yeah, for they, sorry for him being a jerk. <laughs> like knowing how cruel her husband was, she still protected him. Yeah, yeah, and, and stood in, and and defended him as well. She didn't throw him right under the bus. Yeah. I is that love what they said? that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to. And you know, like Pastor was saying this morning, we gotta be kind. We don't have the right to have resentment. We don't have to have. We don't have the right to be cruel back. Mm -hmm. So in whatever, you know, coworkers, family members, friends, mm -hmm. you know, you have no right to go and be hateful and resentful yeah. um you don't have to accept what they're doing is right but you know we can't you know do what then you're no better than them mm -hmm. you know and that's the thing that so to me the whole time you're reading this is do not be so prideful <laughs> right. do not be so stubborn and do not just think oh i know everything and let your flesh come up mm -hmm. to where you're get this you know what I mean? It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. Take correction. Holy cow. Yeah. Right? Oh, about I mean, yeah. yeah. About yeah. how his life ended. It's never going to end good. Yeah. Right. You can't take correction from, right. you know, God or your boss or. Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It just, I, I, it really blessed me to see how her acting in out of her faith and, and following God was able to save so many people. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Like her husband, her husband's heart was hardened and he couldn't have been saved in this case. Right. But she, it, she got, de she got delivered yeah. from him and then she got treated better. Yeah. <laughs> she got to become David's yeah. wife. <laughs> wife. <laughs> so. Of a king. <laughs> yeah. So God is good. That was, that, that was powerful. Thank you for mm. sharing. I like that. God is good. Um, well, that's fun. Next week is Esther, right? I think so. Look at that. World Table of contents. Yeah. <laughs> Esther. Next week is Esther. Yeah. God is good. We're so excited. We love you all. We hope you have a blessed week. <laughs>
If you have a testimony of how the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please send us a message on one of our social media platforms. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your continued support of the work here at Redeemed Christian Fellowship.